How can I help you, sir? I'm setting up an online business, and I hear that organizations are legally required to protect the privacy of customers' personal data. My business is small, but I still have to handle a lot of personal data. I'm here to learn more about it. In the information era, a large amount of personal data collected for daily life or business purposes may be transmitted on the internet. It's important for everyone, and not just the organisations that handle the data, to understand their rights and responsibilities in protecting personal data. Let me explain this in detail. All right. I often hear people say. I'm not telling you that it's private, or I have a right to privacy. What does privacy actually mean? Does Hong Kong have any privacy laws, and how do they protect our rights? Interacting with others involves getting to know some personal data about the other person. Privacy refers to matters that you want to keep to yourself. These can be of an informational, physical, or territorial nature. Everyone has a different understanding and boundaries of privacy, so its meaning varies at different times and to different people. When it comes to legal protection, it doesn't mean that anything that you do not want to disclose is covered by the law. Hong Kong is a forerunner of privacy protection in Asia. As early as 1996, the Personal Data Privacy Ordinance came into effect to protect residents' rights in personal data privacy. Let's look at the regime and definition of personal data under the law, so as to avoid false expectations. In Hong Kong, Chapter 486 of the Laws of Hong Kong, the Personal Data Privacy Ordinance, protects our personal data privacy. The purpose of the ordinance is to protect the privacy interests of living individuals in terms of personal data. According to the ordinance, personal data must fulfil the following criteria: one, the data relates directly or indirectly to a living person; two, you can ascertain the identity of the person from the data; three, the data are in recorded form that you can access or process. Daily examples of personal data includes the individual's name, phone number, address. Profession, identity card number, medical and employment records, and so on. The ordinance regulates the collection, holding, processing, or use of personal data by private organisations, public bodies, and government departments. How does the ordinance protect our personal data privacy? The core components of the ordinance is a set of six internationally compliant data protection principles, which stipulate the collection, holding, accuracy, duration of retention, security, privacy policies, access, and correction of personal data. Data protection principle one stipulates the purpose and manner of collecting personal data, which must be in a lawful and fair way. For example, a company conducts a recruitment drive just to collect personal data from applicants, and has no real intention of actually hiring anyone. This is unfair collection. In addition, the purpose of the collection has to be directly related to the organization's function or activities. Also, the data collected should be adequate but not excessive in relation to that purpose. For example, if someone visits a friend in a building, the security guard may require the visitor to write down his name and ID number. However, if the resident comes down to receive the guest and confirms his identity, it would be excessive collection for the guard to collect the visitor ID number. On or before collecting personal data from an individual, a data user must inform the individual of the purposes for which the data will be used, the classes of persons to whom the data may be transferred, whether it's obligatory or voluntary for the data subject to supply the data, the consequences if he fails to supply the data, the data subject's rights to request access to and correction of the data, and the name and address of the person to whom such requests may be made. 
so I'll have to spend a lot of time explaining this to my clients. The best way is to give your clients a copy of personal information collection statement, which clearly states these out. You can have this printed on the data collection form or clearly displayed at your place of business. Data protection principle 2 relates to the accuracy and duration of retention of the personal data. This means organizations should ensure the accuracy of the data they hold and should not retain them for longer than necessary. For example, if a client notifies an organization of a change of address, the organization must amend this data promptly to ensure that all future contact is through this new address. If an organization suspects that certain personal data in its possession is inaccurate, it should immediately stop using this data. Say if a bank finds that the monthly statements it mails to a client are being returned, it's likely that the contact address is wrong. In this case, the bank should avoid sending mail to the client until it can confirm an accurate address. Data Protection Principle 2 also stipulates that personal data shouldn't be kept for longer than required by the purpose for which data is collected. So how long can the collected personal data be kept? The collection and use of personal data varies from one organization to another. The ordinance doesn't stipulate a specific retention period. Organizations should delete the data when the purpose for collecting the data has been fulfilled. Data Protection Principle 3 relates to the use of personal data. The ordinance stipulates that unless there is a prescribed consent from the data subject, the personal data may be used only for the same purpose or directly related to the original purpose at the time of collection. For example, without prescribed consent, an organization cannot use the personal data provided by an unsuccessful job applicant for any other purpose, such as sales and marketing, as that would constitute change of use of the data. Data Protection Principle 4 relates to the security of personal data. The ordinance requires an organization to take all reasonable, practicable steps to ensure that personal data is protected against unauthorized or accidental access, processing, erasure or other use. Sensitive personal data, such as a person's ID number, bank account, information or medical record, require a higher level of security protection. Disposal of such data also requires appropriate measures. For example, if a salesperson discards former client's records in the rubbish bin in a building, anyone who picks up these records may read all data. This may contravene the requirements of this principle. Data Protection Principle 5 ensures that others are informed of an organization's policies and practices relating to personal data, including the kinds of personal data being held and the main purpose for doing so. The best way is to draft an organizational privacy policy statement to cover the kinds of personal data held, how they will be used, the retention period, security measures and data access and correction policies. These policies could be included in the organization's corporate profile, website or other channel easily accessible by the public. Data Protection Principle 6 relates to the right to access one's own personal data. It specifies that a data subject has the right to ascertain whether or not an organization or a government department holds his personal data and to request for a copy of the personal data held. If it's found that the data contained is inaccurate, the data subject has the right to request for a correction. For example, members of the public can apply to a credit agency for a copy of their credit records. The organization is required to comply with the request to access and correct those records within 40 days. If the organization is unable to comply with the request, it must reply to the requester with supporting reasons within the 40-day time limit. To assist individuals to make data access requests, the PCPD has prepared a data access request form. The ordinance also allows the organization to charge a reasonable fee for such requests. Generally speaking, the fee cannot be more than the direct cost and actual out-of-pocket expenses. I understand the six data protection principles you just explained. What I'm still not clear about is the scope of the ordinance. Let me use some everyday examples to explain it. When a credit card is used to make a purchase, sales staff may ask the customer to show his ID card to ascertain his identity. 
If the sales staff doesn't record the information on the ID card, there is no collection of personal data, and this does not fall within the scope of the ordinance. But if the staff records the ID number, this falls within the scope of the ordinance and may be considered an excessive collection of personal data, which may violate the data protection principle relating to collection of personal data. Another example, an applicant goes for a job interview. One of the organization's staff tells a colleague that he knows the applicant and heard that he was previously employed elsewhere at a very high salary. Hearsay does not involve recording data and can't be practically accessed and processed. Therefore, it doesn't fit the ordinance's definition of personal data. So the case doesn't fall within the scope of the ordinance. However, if at the same interview the organization's personnel leaves the applicant's CV out, which anyone can look at, this falls within the scope of the ordinance and the personnel may breach the requirements of the data protection principle relating to the security of personal data in the ordinance. The Personal Data Privacy Ordinance came into effect in December 1996. The PCPD is responsible for promoting, monitoring and supervising compliance with the ordinance. PCPD is an independent statutory body established in 1996. The Privacy Commission of Personal Data oversees the enforcement of the ordinance, promotes understanding of the ordinance by data subjects and data users, and ensures that all sectors comply with the requirements of the ordinance. The Commissioner is also responsible for investigating complaints, inspecting personal data systems, issuing codes of practice, reviewing legislations, approving matching procedures, and promoting the awareness of data privacy. Hong Kong was the first jurisdiction in Asia that set up a privacy law and an independent privacy commissioner to oversee both private and public organizations. It's also the pioneer in promoting data privacy in the region. Another statutory function of the Commissioner is to discuss with overseas privacy authorities matters of mutual interest concerning data privacy. Through international and regional liaison, the PCPD can get hold of the latest data protection development in tackling privacy issues arising from the free flow of information in the digital age. PCPD is organized into seven divisions, the Administration, Compliance, Legal, Operations, Policy, Corporate Communications and Information Technology Divisions. We are often required to provide our personal data to organizations in our daily lives. Organizations also collect our personal data for marketing purposes. Can we lodge a complaint with the PCPD if we find our personal data being handled improperly? Certainly. One of the key functions of the PCPD's operations division is to handle complaints that may have contravened the ordinance. A data subject may lodge a complaint with the PCPD in writing if he suspects his privacy rights in relation to personal data has been abused. After receiving a complaint and verifying the identity of the complainant, the case officer will contact the complainant and or the party complained against for further information to determine whether or not to undertake a formal investigation. If there is no prima facie evidence of any contravention of the ordinance, further investigation may not be necessary. In general, the case officer will try to resolve the dispute through mediation. If it can't be resolved, or if the case is of a serious nature, the PCPD may undertake a formal investigation. Complainants should pay heed to the complaint handling policy. What will the PCPD do if it's confirmed that there is contravention of the ordinance? The PCPD would recommend to the party complained against ways to remedy the contravention. In the past, many cases were completed satisfactorily where data users implemented the PCPD's recommendations and improve their data handling procedure. A complainant gave his personal data to a company to join an online game. Later on, he found that this data had become freely accessible on the internet. 
The company took the PCPD's advice to improve its customer data storage system promptly, which included storing customers' data in a standalone server not connected to the Internet. If the suspected contravention continues or is of a serious nature, the PCPD may continue or proceed to undertake a formal investigation. If the investigation confirms that the data user has contravened a requirement under the ordinance, the Commissioner may serve an enforcement notice on the data user concerned to direct it to remedy the contravention. An organization staged a promotional event and collected a range of personal data from the participants, including ID number and name of employing company. Upon investigation, the PCPD found that the data collected was excessive, which led to contravention of Data Protection Principle 1. The PCPD served an enforcement notice on the organization directing it to stop collecting the data concerned, destroy the collected data, issue personal data handling policy and guidance, and provide training for staff to improve data handling practice. Contravention of an enforcement notice is an offense which could result in a fine or imprisonment. Wow. We mustn't take it lightly as it could result in serious consequences. Have there been any convictions? Yes, there were some cases where data users were convicted for failing to comply with enforcement notice or contravening the provisions of the ordinance. Let me give you some examples. A credit card company sent direct marketing materials to former customers repeatedly. One of the customers contacted the company and asked it to stop sending him such mail. However, the customer sees such mail from it again. In handling the complaint lodged by the customer, the PCPD requested the company to stop sending marketing materials to the complainant. The company agreed. However, it continued to do so. In the end, the company was found guilty by the court and fined $7,000. A patient requested a copy of his medical records from his doctor. The doctor failed to comply with the patient's request within 40 days as the provisions of the ordinance prescribed. The PCPD intervened in the incident after receiving the complaint and issued a warning to the doctor. Then the doctor provided the patient with the requested personal data. Afterwards, the patient made a second request with the doctor who once again failed to comply. In the end, the doctor was found guilty of contravening the ordinance and was fined $1,000. Good day. May I speak to Mr. Chen Diamond, please? Speaking. Mr. Chen, I'm calling on behalf of a marketing company. May I spare you a few minutes to introduce our new products? No, I'm busy. By the way, I'm not a customer of your company. How did you get my name and telephone number? You've intruded my privacy. I will complain to the Office of the Privacy Commissioner. I often receive direct marketing calls too. I don't have a clue how they got my personal information, as I have never provided them with my phone number. I want to make a complaint too. Actually, the collection of personal data without the data subject's consent does not necessarily contravene the provisions of the ordinance. For instance, the case cited above might not have constituted a contravention of the ordinance. Some complainants may have misunderstood the application of the ordinance in respect of the collection of personal data. The ordinance stipulates that personal data cannot be collected by unfair or illegal means. However, it does not mean that it can only be collected with the data subject's consent or that it can only be obtained directly from the data subject. Oh, if that's the case, we should have a better understanding of our rights as protected by the ordinance. You can always obtain more information from the PCPD telephone hotline, which is one of the main responsibilities of the Compliance Division. Another major task of the Compliance Division is to take proactive action to look into any suspected breaches of the ordinance. Staff members of the PCPD's Compliance Division look out every day for incidents that may contravene the ordinance and take proactive action to stop or prevent misuse or leakage of personal data. They will take proactive action to undertake compliance checks against the relevant organization whenever they spot any suspected contravention of the ordinance from public inquiries or media reports. After investigation, they will urge the organization to take remedial action or serve an enforcement notice directing the organization to rectify the situation in ensuring compliance with the ordinance. The media reported that an organization left a computer server stored with customers' personal data on the street unattended during renovation. As a result, customers' personal data was lost. The PCPD immediately launched an investigation. 
With the intervention of the PCPD, the organization is sure that it would take practicable steps to store customers' personal data safely in the future, including proper storage of the computer server stored with customers' personal data by designated staff, and also guaranteed that similar incidents would not happen again. The PCPD is very concerned about the data leakage incidents that took place in recent years. For instance, data leakage caused by USB drives. Many people store data on a USB drive and carry it around using it. It's convenient, but it's also very easy to lose, thus resulting in data leakage. In recent years, the PCPD has investigated a number of similar cases. After investigation, the PCPD would ask the organization concerned to take practicable remedial measures to ensure personal data in their possession is protected properly. Organizations are requested to set out internal guidelines and procedures in relation to electronic transmission of personal data, restricting the storing of personal data on USB unless with supervisor's approval and raising employees' awareness of personal data protection. After listening to your thorough explanation, now I comprehend how the ordinance protects my personal data privacy and your work. This is very important. Public awareness and the legal system and synergy is key to the success of the enforcement of the ordinance. Therefore, the PCPD will engage in the study of the ordinance and promotion of privacy awareness so that the community would recognize the system and value of personal data privacy. These are job duties of the Legal Division and Corporate Communications Division. The Legal Division is responsible for providing legal advice on all aspects of the PCPD's work, reviewing and reporting on current and proposed legislations that may impact upon personal data privacy and reviewing the ordinance. Staff members of the Legal Division also study and conduct research on the development of privacy law in other jurisdictions and attend court and administrative appeals board hearings on behalf of the Privacy Commissioner. Another duty of the PCPD is promotion and public education. The goal is to instill the notion of respecting and protecting privacy of personal data in the community. In order to raise public awareness of personal data privacy, the PCPD carries out a wide range of promotional and educational activities. The PCPD organizes free public seminars aimed at enhancing public members' understanding of the ordinance. The PCPD also organizes seminars and workshops of different topics and runs the Data Protection Officers Club, aimed at enabling people of different industries to protect personal data. The PCPD handles media inquiries and organizes press conferences to convey its views on privacy issues. The PCPD also produces publications and sets up a website to disseminate information on the protection of personal data. Whether it's enforcing the ordinance, handling complaints and inquiries, carrying out compliance checks, researching legislations or carrying out promotional activities, the ultimate goal of the PCPD is to reinforce the value of protecting personal data privacy in Hong Kong. Somehow the most effective way is that everyone protects his own personal data, respects other people's personal data and recognizes the notion of personal data privacy. The PCPD has been working towards this goal, but your support is of utmost importance. It's our responsibility to protect personal data privacy. Amidst the rapid development of technology, the general public is increasingly concerned about the protection of personal data privacy. The PCPD strives to monitor and supervise the enforcement of the ordinance. Its success rides on the continual support of the general public. I now understand that the PCPD can only operate effectively if each of us understands, respects and protects our own personal data and that of others. You will have my full support.